Union Pacific Corporation, yes, the US Railroad is storming up a storm of a big 2% gain in the year to date, but down about 12% in the last few months. What's happening with the stock? Is it a chance to buy or do you just leave it alone? And if you still got it, is it time to sell? We'll find it all here at Barry Charles. We're going to do a stock analysis on Union Pacific and then um, we'll, which we'll look at revenue, we'll look at net profit, we'll look at long-term debt, we'll look at the return on invested capital, total assets versus total liabilities, shares outstanding on revenue and everything in between. So you get an understanding of what the stock's financials look like. And then if you stay and we'll do a little bit of what the bear and bull cases for this company is and finish off with what you need to know if you stay right to the end, what is the intrinsic value of this company and where can you get in a good price range for you to buy in? I'm very conservative. I want a margin of safety of 50%. That's where I like to go. Get 50% off and then you get 100% gain. That's how you do it. That's the way I like to rock and roll. So let's get to it right here, right now at Barry Charles. Welcome back guys and gals to the channel. We are going to talk about the stock that keeps on giving the railway, yes. The railway's been around for a very, very long time. Can they continue to pro produce good and goods over time? Let's have a look. We look at the revenue here of $23 billion, which is up from $20 billion in 2021. So they're doing good on the revenue side. Net profit is up 6.9 from 6.5, but there's a question mark whether that's going to be the same in this year. So there's a question mark if it's going to go down a little bit. Time will tell on that one. The earnings per share of 10.3, P-E ratio of 19.6, so that's very good. No short interest is not even 1%, so 0 0.8, so very good there. Market cap is around 124 billion. It could be up and down from the time of recording. Um, 52 week range of 183 to 240. So it's in around the middle of the mark right now, depending on time of recording. And return on invested capital, I was pretty shocked. 11.3% is pretty good for a well, well, well established company like this. Um, and that was pretty, that's, that's a plus sign for you. So if you're looking to invest in this company, not financial advice, do your own research before you invest in any stock. Dividends, $5.20 is what you get per year. And a 2.55% dividend yield. So, they, so it's not a bad dividend yield. Total assets versus liabilities, 65 billion in total assets. I'm slightly up, not much of a difference from the future. And liabilities of 53 billion. So that's okay, it's not a fantastic one, but it's not a bad situation going there. Free cash flow, 1.18 billion dollars. But this is where it gets all sad and lonely, folks. Long term debt, 31.5 billion. Are you kidding me? 31.5 billion. It's going to take you 30 years to pay this off. Um, big issues there. Very, very big issues there. Most people will not buy the stock just because of that reason. Shares outstanding 609 million. Um, so, yeah, so this is Union Pacific. What do we understand about Union Pacific? What do they need to do to continue to grow the railroad? Well, that's the biggest question. You're running out of places to build railroads. So they can continue to try and build more railroads, but they've got to get more commissions out of people using the railroad. That's pretty much where most of the income comes from. They've got to get the people using the railroad um, to give them checks all the time and continue to build up, build up, and build up. But they have to continue fixing, so there's always a cost to that. But yes, they really need to get something to gain because they've got a big long-term debt. They really need to... Somehow pay that off, then they've got to find a way to make more money to do so. But their revenue to their profits are actually not too bad. That's not a major concern. But yes, their debt is a big one. Very big, big, big concern. Um, so obviously the bear case for Union Pacific is that this company is dead and gone. Railroads won't get used anymore. Is that a possibility in the future? Possibly Amazon's trying to push, push more delivery, which they're doing. Or they will end up with the railroad disappearing altogether. I don't see that happening. They need railroads for some things. And there's sometimes a cheaper option. So that's why it's still around. But it'll be a question long term. Maybe there won't be. 
Um, the bullish case is that they're going to continue to be profitable. profitable. They're going to pay down their long-term debt and increase their free cash flow. That's what they need to do. Find ways to grow. If they can find ways to make more railroads somewhere that will be beneficial, then they can make some more money that way. But yes, we're going to get to it right here, right now. What is the intrinsic value of Union Pacific Corp? Wow. So I, I'm using a grams calculator here, which looks at share price, earnings per share, growth rate, and the current bond yield. You can put whatever figures you want in any of these. Well, if you like to follow what's actually happening, but you can do whatever you like. It's up to you. But um, this is just to give you an idea of roughly what the intrinsic value of the companies are on a basic level. So the share price for this scenario is going to be about $200. It could be different to what it is currently. This is just what it does. This is just a rough estimate. So two two hundred dollars with a ten point three percent earnings per share at a growth rate of five percent. We're looking at about a hundred and ninety eight dollar stock, and so you're looking at fair value right here, right now at this instance. If you believe that there is some way this continues to grow ten percent a year, then you're looking at two hundred and forty one. If you think ten percent as well, but we're going to add bump up the earnings per share up to twelve. And you see a 356 stock. And then if we push up the growth rate more and the earnings per share, you're looking well over $450. So this is where it's at. Will this company grow big time again? I don't think so. I think you're looking at that 5% range in my humble opinion. This is where the, where the growth's going to be. It could be a little bit higher. So right now, right where we're sitting, around $200 is the intrinsic value. So where do you want to pay? Me, $100. Will Union Pacific ever get to $100? We will need a big recession to happen for that to happen. Um, and you'd hope. But if you if you want to be more realistic and looking at it, if it can creep down to 150 maybe, then that's where you can buy in. But for me, if I want to buy the stock, it would be $100. If it doesn't get there, I will just move on to some other opportunity for me because I just don't think I want at least double my money in whatever I invest into. Obviously, the multi baggers is exactly what you want. But if you can keep double your money all the time, and double, 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 so you can keep on moving up to getting up to that million dollars, and then moving, in, moving, in, moving up the ladder as you go along. It's all about doubles, baby. That's how you get going. And the multi baggers will get you there quicker. And if you're lucky enough to have done it with a Tesla or Ralph Beauty, they're a couple of the recent ones that are really blowing away in the video of late, but they still need more work to do to keep going up. But just gives you an idea of where you can get some multi baggers. But basically, the earlier you can get in the stock, generally the better, not always. But um, especially in, in these days, often with the startups, when they go up, they really shoot to the moon and then they drop down a cliff quickly. That's when you go to buy. At the moment, it generally looks like we're the best place to buy, and then it'll slowly creep up. If it's a good business, keep creeping up and up from there. But often, don't buy it straight away. Sometimes it's a good idea to buy it straight away, but quite often, what we've seen with most of them, they go flying up high. Might be a hundred dollars up from it, and they crash down to somewhere near the IPO level, and then slowly up again. So that's the danger of buying into a startup straight away. But um, but in terms of Unit Pacific, to me, it's a no for me right here, right now. If it dropped somewhere near a hundred dollar range, then I would consider buying it. But for me, it's a bit too ancient for me. They're doing okay, and they're not. They're actually not doing too bad in terms of everything I'm seeing. Yeah, apart from the long-term debt, everything else is actually pretty good for the company. Um, but to me, it's a no. But maybe to you, it's not. It's not financial advice. Do your own research before you invest into any stocks. Well, that was Union Pacific Corporation's stock analysis and intrinsic value just for you so you can understand the company and have a little bit of insight into maybe looking to do some more research before you're looking to invest into the stock. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Share your video with all your friends. And have an awesome day out there.